I had raindrops on the rooftops to corte de la rue de la paix. I had never thought bad weather could feel this way. Je ne pourrai plus jamais te voir. C'est terminé les cours du soir. Hello and welcome to France 24's weekly music show. Our guests this week are up-and-coming French artist Yoa, who has just released her first EP, Attente, a dreamy pop debut that depicts the hopes, ambitions, feelings of alienation and also the boredom one can feel in those transitional years from teenage to adulthood. We also have award-winning Australian jazz singer, pianist and composer Sarah McKenzie. Now she's worked with the likes of Michael, Michel Legrand and Michael Bublé. A few years ago, she wrote an ode to the French capital and she's currently on a mini residency at Paris's famous jazz venue, Le Duc des Lombards. Thank you both so much for coming on France 24's music show. Um, now, I feel like there's a lot of energy and rush to get back to, to normal life after, you know, 18 months of no concerts, um, you know, being locked down or not in lockdown and not knowing where we're going. Uh, I'm going to start off uh, with yeah, you, uh, Sarah. So um, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to be back live in Paris? Because you lived here a few years ago. Yes, I mean, I love Paris. Uh, coming here is always a wonderful experience. The architecture, the history, the culture, the music, the food, the wine. Um, and yeah, I've always found it very inspiring. So I'm so happy to be performing at the Duc de Lombard. Three shows, 26, 27, 28. Uh, and uh, it's going to be great. Mm, no, it's really interesting. Yeah, now, you were in the middle of touring when... Uh the pandemic hit, like and like many musicians, you had to put everything on hold. And uh, you went and you kind of holed up in Hastings initially in, in the south of uh, England. And I heard that that's where you kind of found the, the motivation and the inspiration to join forces with jazz musicians across the world, not just jazz, but also there's lots of bossa nova or blues and pop musicians to uh, create uh, music to connect the world. Can you tell us a little bit about this project and how you chose the artists you worked with? Yeah, absolutely. No, I was in France. I had a French tour and then uh, the very next day all concerts were cancelled. So I hibernated in Sussex in England. Uh, there was a piano in this wonderful old schoolhouse and um, I created this project, a video project, which was really the only thing you could do at a time when you couldn't play together live. So I connected uh, 30 musicians all around the world uh, with uh, 12 songs and um, yeah, it, we created Music Connects Our World. We go from Argentinian bandonian tango music to pop music to the bossa nova to New York jazz. Uh, it was really exciting, really fun, something to keep you inspired and creative during this lockdown period. Mm -hmm. well, how about we check out one of uh, those videos? It fe it's a Schneller featuring Kenny Rampton. Sarah McKenzie using music to connect the world. Now, a lot of those videos you can now find on your Facebook page or YouTube, for instance. Um, I was wondering, just as someone who um, had to do a lot of interviews and meet a lot of people and do, and like a lot of our viewers, do work meetings uh, online, um, I have to admit that the term Zoom fatigue felt very real. Uh, did that <laughs> apply to musicians, you know, working online? Did you get fatigue of online working after a while? No, actually, I really love the experience. I mean, you know, I would get the basis to record first and then I would record on top and it required deep listening you know if if I didn't listen to what the bassist did and if the trumpet player after me didn't listen to what I did the whole thing was a mess and sometimes that happened the best collaborations like this one Schneller were when you had super musicians listening the result is something really exciting you know and I was very surprised I never thought that you could make jazz like this because jazz really re relies on spontaneity mm -hmm. But um, I was very surprised with this project and um, yeah, I'm going to keep it going. Yeah, something to keep going uh, despite uh, the world 
opening up again. Um, yeah, I find that it's also interesting because you um, released videos during lockdown, and a lot of them are, are filmed in your uh, bedroom and or in your in your home in your apartment. And one of them is depicting this sort of idea that we're like, we're, are we working out? Are we lying down? What are we doing? How much uh, did your creativity come out um, in uh, your home in during the pandemic? Well, I was very lucky to have a a space and a home that could um, help me create. Like I wasn't in any uh, position of, uh, it, it wasn't very hard times for me because I was very lucky to have a, a house and a home of my own with that I shared with my boyfriend. So it was, um, it was really nice. I started, I listened to a lot of different styles of music and um, started watching a lot of like videos and video clips that I had not been watching and that I wanted to watch, but I didn't have time to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was really inspiring for me because I got to do all of the things that I didn't have time for. Mm -hmm. So there's a reconnection internally as well, yes. in a sense. Um, you're, you've just released your first EP called Attends, so the wait is up. Um, but a lot of the tracks you, I read you'd started working on when you were like 60 or 2016, so quite a few, like you were a teenager. Yes. And uh, would you say it's a bit of a, a coming, there's a coming of age element to this record because you've transitioned so much? Definitely, yes. Um, most of the the songs that are on the, the, the album, the mm -hmm. EP, mm -hmm. Um, as you said, I wrote them about five or four years ago when I was still like in high school. And um, the most recent tracks from the the album are like six months old, maybe. So um, so so yeah, definitely, it it, it means something for for me mm -hmm. from uh, since it, it it relates also. Um, well, it talks about whether I wanted to make it talk about it or not this time where you feel like you're coming out of something and you're entering a new you're you're entering adulthood mm -hmm. I can't have been easy um, doing that in uh, in a time when we can't really go out and explore with other people but um, how about we look at one of your recent singles featuring French rapper Tomasi <laughs> J'ai attendu longtemps avant de chanter pour toi Je vais me balader sous l'orage J'aurais trop peur de choper un coup de foudre Trop longtemps j'attends d'être en âge D'avoir un briquet d'enflammer la poudre On attend sur un banc, pas trop sûr de nous Excellent track that can be found on yours new uh, debut EP. Um, I was going to go over back to Sarah because your career has spanned well over a decade and you actually started writing yourself uh, as a teenager. Do you remember what it felt like to uh, release your first record and how does the excitement change as you progress in a career? Yeah, I do. Uh, I re remember it very much. I was 21 uh, and I was in Australia, which is my hometown. And uh, yeah, as you progress, you know, you need to dig deeper and deeper. You know, uh, the first and the second, even the third are really exciting and there's a lot to write about also because you've been saving up all the stories and experiences from high school and everything. As you move on through life and the responsibilities get more and more, it becomes more interesting. You need to dig deeper and uh, that's what I'm finding. But when you do that, actually, I think the music can get richer, more exciting, more meaningful, more emotional. So you just need to persevere, you know, and, and that's what, you know, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. And now you're, you're, you've uh, cited amongst your influences uh, French artists, Soko, but also uh, FK Twigs, uh, and they strive very much to have a varied and diverse artistry. Uh, is that something that you do yourself because you trained as an actress since you were a little girl and you've also like, uh, you know, applied and got very far in the selection process for huge universities here, but also the uh, Juilliard School in New York. Um, so that's pretty amazing. Uh, how do you see yourself having a multifaceted career? Do you think people maybe, you know, your generation are more open to this sort of? Yes, I think so. I think it's, um, yes, I think it's, uh, well, f for me, I always see, I always believed in the fact that um, art, like, um, 
is always can always be influenced by art, you know. And uh, I always wanted, I always knew that if I ever made music or if I ever um, made um, a theater or if I ever, I don't know, directed anything, I would try and include dance, uh, acting, music within all of these things. So yeah, for me, it's it's, it's important to have a. Um, well, if if you know and if you if you can do very well a certain amount of like artistic, um, um, how can I say fields? It? Yeah, yeah. Just you might as well just show them and and use them in in, in your art. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, uh, we look forward to f like following both of you in your diverse projects, uh, be it touring, of course, you've got Europe and then you've got the States in the new year. Yes. Uh, any tours for you to come up as well? Uh, in mostly in Paris for mostly now. Mostly in Paris for now, but we're hoping the world's going to open up in, uh, in 2022. Uh, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on the Encore Music Show this week. France 24's news is coming up in just a few uh, minutes. Uh, that uh, leaves us time to remind you that to head to France24.com for uh, some culture news and of course do follow us on social media that is at Encore F24 uh, we've just got enough time now to finish with one of this week's new releases time for something completely different you got, are you ladies partial to some heavy metal I love heavy metal Definitely. okay perfect well let's go um, this is at Mastodon they're back at the Atlanta Georgia natives known for their stoner doom tinted metal explore grief and death mythology and notably how after death our souls are going off to inhabit trees in their new album entitled Hushed and Grim. <laughs> 